So what we have here is a BAT VK6200. That's a balanced audio technology power amplifier and a rather high-end power amplifier. Um, and the complaint with this power amplifier is that when you turn the switch to on, it pops the speakers on one channel. And it happens to be this channel right here that that's happening on. And I believe, I can't get a schematic for this, but uh, I am, uh, I have made some measurements between the two channels. And I believe that the issue is this uh, MOSFET right here. I believe that that has to do with uh, knocking down the inrush current into the filter capacitors when you turn the amplifier on. But we'll take a look at what it looks like when this uh, misbehaves in a minute here. So, I want you to take a look at the top line on the oscilloscope here. That's the one coming out of the channel that's causing the issue. I'm going to power the amplifier on and we'll take a look at the impulse that's coming through the speakers. And you can see that that jump is quite large there. It's enough to pop a speaker real good. And you'll also notice when I turn the amplifier off that a couple of seconds after I turn it off you see another impulse come through. There it was. So, that's what we're hoping to get rid of. We're going to replace this uh, MOSFET. It's an IRF 540. Um, you can only get them now. IRF 540 PBF, which is the lead-free version of that MOSFET. Um, we'll see if that takes care of the problem. Okay, so now we've replaced this MOSFET in the power supply. And what we're going to do is we're going to go over and we're going to take a look. And we're going to see how our turn on is working now. So let's take a look. And we'll take a look at the lines. And the amplifier is on now. Well, now. Now you'll notice that we had absolutely zero jump in that top line, meaning we've accomplished our mission here. But you'll also notice that the bottom line jumped just a little bit. Now I'm going to power off and we're going to count and see if we get that power off impulse coming through again. Power off. And now that impulse was happening at about six seconds. So that impulse is gone as well. However, I think that I would like to replace the MOSFET in the other channel and see if we can get this thing to just be uh, just as quiet as I'll get out when we power it on. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to put this amplifier through a number of frequencies and we're going to watch the amplitude and see how flat it is. And right now we're at 20 hertz. So you can see where that's running at about 20 hertz. And now we're going to move on to 50 hertz. And you can see we're a, a little bit more, but not much. So uh, that's a pretty good amplitude for 50 hertz. We're going to go to 1000 hertz. And you can see here, we're looking about the same. We're going to go to 10,000 hertz. And here you can see we're looking about the same. We're going to go to 18,000 hertz. And here you can see we're looking about the same. Now we're going to go to 20,000 hertz because, of course, that's the end of the human hearing range. And you can see we're looking about the same. So 
this amplifier is just as flat as flat gets um, all the way up. It uh, falls off a tiny bit at 20 hertz, but boy, not much. And so uh, we've got a, a good flat amplifier here. Throughout the frequency range, the amplitude stays about the same, and that's exactly what you would look for in a high quality amplifier like this. These amplifiers are not inexpensive. I believe that there's a three channel one right now uh, selling on Reverb for about $4,400. Um, this amplifier was expensive when it was built and the build quality of this amplifier is off the charts. It is absolutely fantastic. Every uh, attention was paid to detail here and the construction of the cabinet of the amplifier is such that it weighs between 130 and 140 pounds just the way it is. You can see here that each channel has its own toroid and uh, it's got its own power supply. There is, uh, this is just, just incredibly good build quality on this amplifier. So uh, that's probably gonna close out this video here. And we've got the uh, transients out of the power supply, so it shouldn't be thumping our speakers. We may come back here and have it hooked up to a set of speakers and listen to power on just to see how much noise it does make. Okay, so let's give the speakers a listen on power up here. That's power up. Here's power down. So, did a good job of getting rid of that pop, and that's what we were after.